All right, seven point two, part B. Um, so to start off, we, um, example one, we're finding the area between the regions of f of x and g of x. But notice how I don't have a limit, right? My, I don't have my lower and upper limits, and I don't have a picture. So this is when your um, function analysis or uh, graphing parent functions comes into play into calculus. For example, both of these are quadratics, so they're both parabolas. G of x is just a parabola, a normal one, but the 4 tells me it's 4 units up. So, here's g of x. <clears throat> and then f of x is also a parabola, but it's a negative parabola and it has a 2 in front of the x squared. Um, so it's actually a thinner parabola, but what's really important is that it's um, upside down. When it's negative, it's upside down. And then the 16 tells me 4 units up, or 16 units up. So, uh, and I'll make this one blue. If this is 4, let's pretend this is 16, obviously not to scale. So um, f of x is going to look something like this. Now if I want to find the area of the region um, between both of these graphs, I'm looking for this. So I will have to know, or I will need to know, where my graphs intersect. Now your calculator can do that, and I can certainly show you next class. Um, but algebraically, this can be figured out by just taking the two equations and setting them equal to each other. So 16 minus 2x squared equals x squared plus 4. If I solve that, my solution will be the x's where my two graphs intersect. Um, remember, g of x is the black graph and f of x is the blue graph. So, do a little math, um, add 2x squared to both sides, that goes away, so I have 16 equals 3x squared. Oh, and I don't know if you recall, last class, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I'm this far. You're probably wondering, where'd she get the 16 from? If you recall, last class, I mentioned right before the bell rang that um, I was going to change it slightly because it used to be a 7. And that's exactly the same equation that was on your previous homework. Um, so I want to change the 16. I'm sorry, I forgot. Because <laughs> I, I, had, I had already changed it onto the, on this um, presentation. My bad. Okay, so back to 16 equals 3x squared. Um, oh, I, was in, I forgot the 4. Um, 16 equals 3x squared plus 4, so then um, I would subtract 4 from both sides, and I get 12 equals 3x squared, and then I would divide both sides by 3, and I would get, f that's a, see I say 3, then I write 3. So I get 4 equals x squared, and then I square root both sides, and my answers are plus and minus 2. So that, so this is negative 2 and this is positive 2. That is where my equations, or my graphs, intersect. So now, to find the area, if we recall, I'm going to do top curve minus the bottom curve, and I am integrating, and now that I figured out where my graphs intersect, um, those are my upper and lower limits. So, I'm integrating from negative 2 to positive 2. The top curve is f of x, so 16 minus 2x squared. That's f of x minus g of x, which is x squared plus 4. Now, parentheses in the second equation are important because they will remind you to distribute this negative, the minus. And then, of course, this is all the, uh, being integrated with respect to, d, to x. And certainly, you can do this by hand. But, um, like I mentioned before, we're at a point where this part should be something we know how to do. Um, 
I mean, there's only so many equations, regular equations you can integrate over and over again. So this is 16 minus 2x squared, and I'm just simplifying real quick. Minus x squared minus 4, and then hopefully you see that the number is in the middle. The negative 2x and the negative x, or they're both squared. So I can join them as negative 3x squared, and then the 16 and the minus 4, that's 12. So this is really what I'm integrating. This is a lot easier to do, right? Um, so I get 12x minus x cubed, and that is getting evaluated from negative 2 to 2. Plug in the 2, I get 24 minus 8. Plug in the negative 2, I get negative 24 minus negative 8. A minus a negative, they make positive, right? So 24 minus 8, 16 minus negative 24 um, plus 8. So that's negative 16. And so I have 16 minus negative 16, so these become pluses. And I have 32. And that's my area between my two curves. Alright. Um, example 2 is slightly different in that, if you notice, um, for a little bit, this function's on top. And then it's not on top anymore. And then it's this function. And then up to right there at x equals 2, it's back to the other one being on top. And um, if you notice also the equations, they look weird too. It's no big deal, right? If you come across an example like this, you should be able to handle it. Now this is fine, y equals 4 um, minus x squared. But the problem comes here. Oh wait, never mind. I'm thinking of example three. Okay, that's fine. So here are my two functions, and what you're gonna have to do is you're going to have to integrate this, and you're gonna do it in three pieces because this is in three pieces. So first we're gonna get that. So from negative two up to right at negative one, because that's where they intersect. So negative two to negative one, I'm gonna have um, negative x plus 2 on top, and then minus <coughs> the 4 minus x squared. So that's the first piece. Then I'm going to add that to this piece right here, this area. And for this area, it starts at negative 1, and it ends right where they intersect right here at x equals 2. And then um, for this part, uh, y equals 4 minus x squared, that's on top. So 4 minus x squared, and then minus the other one, which is negative x plus 2. And that's dx. Sorry, I'm trying to squeeze it in there. Okay. And then, we're going to add it to this area right here. It starts at x equals 2, and we stop at x equals 3. And then for this little sliver of area, um, the straight line is on top. So negative x plus 2 minus 4 minus x squared. And that's dx. Okay, so here are three integrals to add up these three areas. Um, obviously the blue is going to be negative, but that's okay. And you could do this on the calculator. I'll admit, I took the easy way out and I did it on the calculator after simplifying. Okay, when you simplify the red part, and I'm still, I'm going to leave this color code. So, we're finding area, right? When I simplify the red part, um, this is negative 2, negative 1, I get negative x minus 2 plus x squared. When I say simplify, I mean I distribute the negative, I remove the parentheses, um, the 2 and the negative 4, I combine them, right? I'm going to move this over here so I have more space. <laughs> Alright, and then plus the green part. And when I simplify the green part, it's still 1 over 2, or sorry, negative 1 over 2, that looks like a 7. Boy, oh boy. Negative 1 over 2. 
and then 2 minus x squared plus x. That's what I, what I get when I simplified. Um, and then now I add the blue, which is from 2 to 3. Um, and um, if you notice, you should actually have the same equation as the red. Negative x minus 2 plus x squared dx. Okay, so that's what I put into my calculator. Because we should know how to integrate already. If we don't, we need to practice. And I mean, when I say we, I mean you. So, when I plug into the calculator, I got, and I'm, I'm all, all of this is in decimals for me. That's what I have there. And then here, I got that. And here, oops, different color. I got 1.8333. When you add all of these up, you get 8.167 or 49 over 6. All right, example three, like, as you've noticed, the last two were not anything new, it's just slightly different. This one is not new either, you're still doing the same thing, but a little slightly different. And the difference is, well, um, as I got confused with the other equation, this is the one I wanted to point out. x plus y equals 2. Solve it for y. So y equals 2 minus x. So that's the equation I'm going to use. Um, and the other difference... Right? If I were using equations, I would need this. But, if I look at this, I don't have to use equations the whole time. This is not an area between two curves. Because if you notice, there is no time at all where one is above the other. Right here, down the middle, this is where they split. Let me do that better. They split right here. Okay? Now, on the left... Um, it's only x squared. On the right, it's only the y equals 2 minus x. So, you can figure out this right here geometrically. This is a triangle. Um, and this triangle has an area of, let's see, 1 half times base. The base is 1, and the height is 1. So, 1 half times 1 is 1 half. So, you're done with that part. So I don't even have to worry about the equation. And um, then the other, I would do just finding the area um, underneath x squared. So I would integrate x squared. So it's going to start off with 1 half. That's the triangle, the area of the triangle, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. And so then you would integrate the integral, obviously, right? And you would get x cubed over 3, and you evaluate that from 1 to 0. So 1 half plus, plug in the 1, you get 1 third. Plug in the 0, you get 0. So 1 half plus 1 third. And so that is 3 sixths plus 2 sixths. And so you get 5 sixths. All right, on the back. The back is two problems where my function is not in terms of x, it is in terms of y. And if you look at this little equation, oops, in terms of y, not equation. My limits are y, 2 and y, 1. Um, and instead of dx, it says dy. And instead of being top curve, it's the right curve, the curve on the right. And instead of being bottom curve, it's the left curve. Okay, these are the inverse. We're using the inverse here. Um, and so it is possible to integrate in terms of y. Example 4, if you notice this function here, my equations are written in terms of y. So this is x equals y plus 1 and, and x equals 3 minus y squared. And since... There is, looking at it this way, you can't really, there is no top um, function. But there is a function that is mostly on the right, and that would be this one right here. Okay? So that's my right function. 
And then the straight line, that would be my left function. Now, there's another way to look at this, and that is if you take this and, or basically your paper, and you flip it to the left, okay, now it's a lot easier to tell which one is the top curve and which one's the bottom curve, right? This is my top curve, and this is my bottom curve. Okay, that's, and that's the whole process. It's the same exact thing, just you have to look at it differently or tilt your head to the right <laughs> and read it that way. Now, um, the limits work the same way. This is 1, and then this right here is negative 2. Um, but normally, we read from left to right as, you know, negative is the smallest and then positive is the biggest. So... Here, the negatives are on the right, and the positives on the left, so that's a little weird. Um, but you're just going to put the negative on the bottom, it's the lower limit, and the positive number will be the upper limit. But that's basically it, um, the difference anyway. So we're going to go ahead and find the area here, and I'll, I'll leave both of those pictures up, no biggie. <laughs> so the area is going to be from right here which is negative 2, to right here, which is positive 1. And then the red graph is 3 minus x, or sorry, y. See, I'm so used to x. Just like you. 3 minus y squared. And then I subtract the bottom, or um, in other words, the left function. And that is y plus 1. And I'm integrating with respect to, oops, I picked this the wrong color. I'm integrating with respect um, to y. Okay, so there's my integral. Um, and you can simplify this, and yes, you can plug this into the calculator. Oh, but it has y's. That's okay, the calculator does it really care that your variable's a y. It's still the same process. Um, I would simplify a little. For example, this becomes negative y, and this becomes negative 1, and then 3 and the negative 1 become 2 minus y squared minus y. If you don't want to plug it in the calculator, you could still do it by hand. 2y minus y cubed divided by 3 minus y squared divided by 2 evaluate from uh, negative 2 to 1. If you plug in 1, you get 2 minus 1 third minus 1 half. Plug in the negative 2 um, and you get 4, or negative 4, sorry. Negative 2 plugged in. And then negative 2 cubed is negative 8 over 3. And then plug in the negative 2, that's squared, that's 4 over 2. And then you can continue. Um, give everything the same denominator. And then on this side, do the same, give everything the same denominator. The minuses become pluses, right? And then, we get negative 7 over 6 plus, and, okay, let me just write out, minus negative 20 over 6, and that's how I get the plus, okay, right? Plus, plus. Um, and then, this is 13, or wait. Oh, hee hee. I don't know where I got this negative from. But that makes better sense. 7 over 6. It's not negative. I don't know where I got that from. 7 plus 20, 27 over 6. There you go. Alright. Um, oh, that could be simplified. 3 goes into both of them, right? 3 goes into 27 9 times, and 3 goes into 6 twice. And um, it's also 4.5. So slightly different, but basically the same, right? Please, no cows to be had here. Okay, example 5, same idea. 
um, this is the right function, so it, it basically becomes the top function. And this is the left function, so it's basically the bottom function, and you would do the same thing, right? Um, wash, rinse, repeat, same process. And so then here, my area is from 0 to 1, and then 12y squared minus 12y cubed, um, that's the top one, or the right function, minus the bottom or the left function, and that's 2y squared minus 2y, and we are integrating with respect to y. And of course, I challenge you to enter this into the calculator and you'll see that you get the same exact answer. It's not a big deal. Um, and the answer is just 4 thirds. Alright, that's it. Short and sweet, I think. Um, your homework is to finish the worksheet you got in class. And um, I'm going to try again with going over the multiple choice review, number 21 to 30. Because I do have some kind of a voice back. Alright, see you next class.